Hello everyone, my name is Zach and today we're here in Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, the capital of the great state of Tennessee. And today we're going to show you what you can do in the city of Nashville in just a day. So come on, let's get this adventure started. So the first question you might be asking yourself is why is there an exact replica of the Parthenon in Nashville, Tennessee? Well, maybe you weren't asking yourself that question, but this is Centennial Park. This is our first stop today. It's currently eight o'clock in the morning here in Nashville. Beautiful Sunday morning here in late October. And Centennial Park was dedicated in honor of the state of Tennessee's 100th anniversary. And in honor of that they also built a replica of the parthenon the parthenon of course existed and uh, remnants of it still exist in athens greece and when the, it came time to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the state of tennessee i guess the folks uh, of tennessee and of nashville decided to put this here interestingly it's the only exact replica of the parthenon anywhere in the world and it's here in nashville and it's the reason that a lot of folks give the nickname to Nashville, Athens of the South. From the steps here of the Parthenon, you can look out and see uh, over there is Vanderbilt University, uh, just to our east. And then if we look here, just off to the north, northeast from the steps of the Parthenon out here in the front, uh, you'll see the city of, or the downtown part of Nashville. And we'll be headed over there shortly. Her 2020 album, Folklore, Taylor Swift wrote a song called Invisible String, and in that she says, gold were the colors of the leaves when I showed you around Centennial Park. She was referring to this park here, because of course she is from Nashville. Of course, Nashville is a very popular city in and around pop culture. Of course, it is the home of country music, but now uh, it's been made into television shows and uh, all sorts of music and now even movies and other TV shows. We'll see a lot of, uh, you know, things that you've probably seen on TV or have heard about in songs or movies as we maneuver about the city today. So now walking down Music Row, one of the most famous rows in Nashville. Of course, Nashville known as Music City, the home of country music. Now back in the day before YouTube, and streaming and Spotify and iTunes and all those things, artists actually had to come and go door to door at the record labels here on Music Row. And a lot of times they would actually record their albums here on Music Row back before they had studios at their houses and you could do everything in digital. And we're actually gonna see a famous uh, studio here in just a minute, the RCA Studio B. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about that when we get there. We're gonna take a walk around and look at some of Music Row. We're just a couple, a few blocks away from Centennial Park now making our way toward downtown Nashville. You might see a lot of guitars like these in the video today, uh, and I'll just tell you what they are now. These guitars are all around the city of Nashville. Uh, they're painted like Gibson guitars, of course, Gibson guitars made here in Nashville, Tennessee, but these guitars uh, sometimes honor things around the city, things uh, pay homage to things in country music, or also, like these guitars, they pay homage to some famous musicians. So this one here, the one on the left, Heartbreak Hotel, of course, uh, honoring Elvis, and then the guitar on the right honoring Roy Orbison. There's two more guitars. Uh, these going together here, the one on the left honoring the Carter family, uh, keep on the sunny side, and then the one on the right, uh, you sort of have to guess about it for a minute. It doesn't actually have the name explicitly written out, but this one, of course, Johnny Cash and Sun Records, uh, and of course, it's painted with flames, falling into a burning ring of fire. Carol Music Row is the historic RCA Studio B, and this is where so many country artists have recorded so many of the most famous country music songs ever. Back in the 1950s, the studio was known for producing what would become known as the Nashville Sound, and this is actually where Dolly Parton recorded some of her earliest recordings, uh, including those with Porter Wagoners. They had many sessions here recording a lot of their multiple duets and duet albums here together and in 1973 this is actually the location where Dolly recorded her hit song I Will Always Love You. So 
So that's Music Row, uh, just a quick overview of it. One thing I will say here, and I've noticed as I've walked up and down through Music Row, you see the for lease sign there. I've seen a lot of those and a lot of vacant uh, buildings that probably used to be recording studios and record labels, and that just shows you how the music industry is drying up and that uh, mark is being felt here in Nashville, of course, Music City USA. And this, of course, is in response to so many things going digital now, so many uh, digital streaming platforms, and then artists just being able to do it on their own with YouTube and other platforms like that where creators can have instant access to the world and they don't really need a record label like they used to. So if you're coming to Nashville anytime soon, I suggest that you hit up Music Row and see some of this while it's still here. So Virgin does airlines, now they do cruise lines, and I guess they also do hotels now too. I've never seen a Virgin Hotel before, but here is one right here in Nashville. I'll help you all out that might be coming to Nashville soon. This is pronounced Demombruin. So now we're walking from Music Row, which is back that way, uh, back past the Naked People statue, uh, down along Demombruin Street, and Demombruin will take us over uh, into downtown Nashville. We're gonna cross the bridge right up here uh, over I-40. So as you might imagine, being a Tennessee boy, this isn't my first time in Nashville. I love Nashville. It's always been one of my favorite cities, uh, but I'm very familiar with this one. So that sets Nashville apart from uh, cities like Philadelphia, Seattle, and Denver, the other cities I've done a in a day series for. So I, I sort of had a, was clued in a little bit, had a little bit of a head start per se. Uh, but keep on watching. We're gonna have something very special at the end of this video because at the end of this video I'm actually going to see Dolly Parton perform her first show since 2016 so way back before the pandemic uh, but I want to see Dolly this evening at the Country Music Hall of Fame so uh, I'll show you some of that toward the end of this video and that of course is what brought me to Nashville today. probably been to Nashville at least a hundred times but I haven't been in a couple of years and I'm amazed at uh, how much new construction is here like the skyline of the city is completely different now than what I remember it when I was last here a lot of new buildings going up all around the city uh, it, just demonstrating a city that is thriving right now Here at the intersection of 10th Avenue and DeMombro and you'll find the Frist Art Museum and it's the uh, main art museum here in Nashville. I've never been there before but my art teacher in high school had a lot of great things to say about it in high school. She talked about it all the time so I'm sure it's great so if you're into art check that out. So I'm actually staying the night tonight in Nashville and I'm here at the JW Marriott right on DeMombro Street right across from Bridgestone Arena just right down the street from the Country Music Hall of Fame and look at this amazing view now this view is a uh, south nashville so that's sort of like where we came this morning and i'll show you a better picture of that here in just a minute when i'm done talking but uh gonna head out now taking a, an hour or so to get refreshed you know and had an early flight into nashville did want to say here uh if you are flying into nashville it's only about a 10 or 15 minute uber taxi ride or car ride whatever in the car if there's no traffic and early this morning there wasn't any traffic at all it was only 10 to 15 minutes so it's very accessible from the nashville international airport uh, a lot of flight options into nashville i know uh, most major uh, airports in the united states uh, now fly to nashville have a non-stop to nashville nashville flies all over the country soon to be all over the world and they're expanding over there so uh, if you're going to fly into Nashville, it's very accessible to the downtown area. So let's check out this view and then let's go out. Uh, the game plan is to hit up downtown. We're going to look at the Ryman Auditorium. We're going to check out Lower Broadway. We're going to see Nissan Stadium. There's actually a football game ongoing right now. And then we're going to head over and see the Tennessee State Capitol. So lots more to see this afternoon. And of course, we got Dolly coming up later. So here we go. Hopefully you can see there's not too much of a glare. Uh, we came across that bridge this morning. Right here is the old train station in nashville right over there right next to that is the frist art museum which i told you about we were right there at the main entrance and then i came on up to the hotel uh but if we look let's see let me find it right back there see the parthenon which is uh where we started this video so we walked from the parthenon over to music row which is back that way and then down to mon Bruin into downtown and here we are so this amazing view over looks south nashville and areas toward the south um, and you can see the hills that surround Nashville because Nashville is in what's known as the Nashville Basin. 
So uh, some nice little rolling green Tennessee hills back there, a stunning view. I'm so happy to be back in Tennessee, my home state, and Nashville, one of my favorite cities in the entire world. So let's go explore more of Music City, USA. So now turning on to Broadway, and Broadway's where we're gonna find the brunt of the attractions in Nashville, uh, specifically Lower Broadway, which I noticed that they're now calling Sobro, I guess Southern Broadway. But uh, from about here and uh, about the middle point in downtown Nashville, all the way down to the Cumberland River. Definitely in Nashville when you see a tractor pulling a, a bar, I guess, a mobile bar. Welcome to Nashville, y'all. So as a testament to how quickly Nashville is growing, this actually used to be here uh, where you see all this new construction, these new buildings over here. It used to be the Nashville Convention Center. Uh, they tore it down. Last time I was here, it was just a dirt lot and they were developing it. Now it's all the way down the corner down there is an Apple store. There's more shopping there in the middle. And then this over here is Hattie B's. Uh, Nashville hot chicken. This is sort of where the Nashville hot chicken craze began. You see the line there out the door folks here downtown won't eat there but this is not the original location. The original location is outside of downtown but there are several Hattie B locations all around the city so don't be fooled if you come to Nashville and thinking you have to wait in a line here or wait to get a table here. Uh, there might be a wait at the other locations but at least know that there are other options for eating at Hattie B's. Uh, and getting that Nashville hot chicken when you come. Now as we head down Broadway, you can start to hear the music, you can see the crowds uh, down here on the street. And we are now getting into Lower Broadway, I guess, or Sobro as they call it now. And this is gonna be the part of Nashville uh, where you're gonna find the honky tonks, the bars, the clubs, the saloons, all that, a lot of the restaurants that the country artists have recently opened. Those are all gonna be down here, so we're gonna check this area out. This here is Bridgestone Arena. It's sort of uh, the start of Lower Broadway. Bridgestone Arena is, if you watch the Country Music Awards or anything like that, they have a lot of the Country Music Award programs here. The CMA Awards are usually held here. The CMT Awards uh, used to be held here. Uh, so a lot of uh, a major Country Music Awards held here at Bridgestone Arena. Also, any major concerts that are happening, uh, in an arena style setting will happen here. Uh, so most of your artists, uh, no matter what genre of music they're in, when they're performing or going on a, a world tour or at least the United States tour, they're probably gonna stop in Nashville, which means they're probably gonna be playing Bridgestone Arena. So pretty much everyone, name any artist, and they probably played Bridgestone Arena before. This has been around since uh, the, the late 90s, I think. So uh, it's seen a lot of action. It's also home of the Nashville Predators, the hockey team here in town. Here's a look at Bridgestone Arena from across the street. It's got the famous sort of radio antenna spire up there on top. And it's here at the corner of Broadway and John Lewis Way South, right across the corner from Tootsie's and a location where we're gonna visit next. Right up there you can see the Batman building, the AT&T building, one of the tallest buildings in Nashville. They used to be the tallest when I was a kid, but now Nashville's growing so exponentially they're building these new skyscrapers. They're really towering over the AT&T building, but you can see why it's called the Batman building. So doing a little bit of wayfaring for you, uh, there's the intersection I was just telling you about with Bridgestone Arena across the road. Tootsie's is the purple bar over there. We see the Batman building and now we see the mother church of country music, the Ryman Auditorium. One of the most famous uh, locations in the world regarding country music, uh, the Ryman Auditorium. It's the original home of the Grand Ole Opry. And the Grand Ole Opry started back in the 1920s, I believe right here. Uh, in Nashville, right here at the Ryman Auditorium. Actually, I take that back. It did not start at the Ryman. It started at another venue in Nashville, but quickly moved over to the Ryman. And then uh, in the 70s, it moved over to the eastern port of Nashville to the Grand Ole Opry House, uh, but they still bring it back here sometimes. So this is just a historic uh, venue for acts, again, across all genres when they come to Nashville. If they're looking for a more intimate setting to play, they're more than likely gonna play the Ryman Auditorium. And it's a beautiful auditorium inside. I've been here for the Opry a couple times and uh, it's just stunning. Originally a church, the Union Gospel Tabernacle, you can see up there at the top, inscribed, dating back to 
only is the Raman Auditorium the mother church of country music, it's also regarded as the birthplace of bluegrass music. In December 1945, Grand Ole Opry star Bill Monroe, uh, and who is statued right here, and his band brought a new American musical form to the stage uh, that was the banjo style of Earl Scruggs and guitar of Lester Flatt. If you know anything about country bluegrass music, you know of Flatt and Scruggs. Um, so that was essentially created here, bluegrass music, or thought to have been created here. I'm sure folks were playing it uh, well before then, but back in December of 1945, and here himself, the um, father of bluegrass, Bill Monroe. And here uh, beside the Ryman, just down from the Bill Monroe statue, uh, is another statue that was just erected in 2020, and this is Loretta Lynn, long regarded as the queen of country music. Now we've made it back here to the back side of the Ryman, and this is the official entrance. They also have a gift shop here. Uh, it is open currently. You can go inside there. They also have the box office here. So if you're going to buy tickets to any of the shows at the Ryman or, you know, pick up tickets at Will Call or anything like that, that's where you do it. And then this is the entrance that you will come to for your show right here on the back side of the Ryman. Nashville, of course, being known for its music, uh, you'll see a lot of little stages like this, just little random stages around because it is a city of live music. Literally, as you walk up and down Broadway, you're gonna hear music everywhere, uh, sometimes from many different buildings at once, but they also have these little plazas set up all around the city so that you can, you know, maybe hear the next up and coming artist play as you wait in line or something like that. Here's the last statue we'll see at the Ryman Auditorium. This is Opry member, former Opry member, Little Jimmy Dickens. Uh, he first debuted on the Ryman stage in 1948 and went on to become one of the longest tenured and most beloved of the Grand Ole Opry members. So now I'm going to show you all something that I think a lot of tourists miss when they come to Nashville because no one's back here. This is the alley between the Ryman Auditorium and Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. And you can see here this entrance up into the Ryman. Um, this used to be where artists would a lot of times either enter and or exit the Ryman Auditorium when they'd come to play the Opry or any other type of show. So they would come out of the Ryman and walk right across the street here to Tootsie's. So this used to be the place to get artist sightings in Nashville. You would just come here to this alley by, Ry by the Ryman Auditorium and wait for them to either come out and get on their buses or get in their cars back here or to walk across the street to have a drink after the show. So now we've left the Ryman, which you can see back there. You can see Tootsie's Orchid Lounge just in front of that. Very historical lounge here in Nashville. Uh, right upstairs at Tootsie's right up there is sort of rumored to be the location where Willie Nelson sat and wrote Crazy, which became a huge hit for country legend Patsy Cline. So that's right here, right by the Ryman Auditorium, right here on Lower Broadway in Nashville. And as we we'll walk down through here, in addition to all the honky tonks and bars, you'll actually start to see a lot of uh, familiar names that now own restaurants and bars. A lot of the country artists have got into that recently. Like right down there is Dirk's Bentley's uh, whiskey something another, but we'll see that a lot as we walk down through here. Now if you want some real country music when you come to Nashville, the Ernest Tubb Record Shop has been here for 74 years, selling records right here on Lower Broadway in Nashville. And uh, back in the day when there actually used to be album launches and album releases, when physical albums would launch, a lot of artists would actually do their releases right here at Ernest Tubb. They would appear in store that day to support and to promote their brand new album. Now walking across the Shelby Street pedestrian bridge, this connects downtown Nashville, which is right back here, to Nissan Stadium, which is around over here. Nissan Stadium is the home of the Tennessee Titans 
and they're actually having a home game today. Right there's another Nashville attraction that you can actually take advantage of during your visit. That's the General Jackson Showboat, which leaves over near the Grand Ole Opry House and uh, Opryland Hotel, which is over in the east side of town. I don't think we'll make it over there today, but you can actually catch that, and it comes along the Cumberland River right here to downtown Nashville. Now we're gonna switch it up a bit and uh, walk back through downtown, but now we're gonna head over toward the Tennessee State Capitol building. So early on Christmas morning of 2020, someone parked uh, an RV just right up the street here, right at the base of this tall building, which is another one of AT&T's properties, and they detonated the RV and it exploded, and it exploded a lot of 2nd Avenue North, which is right here, and a lot of these buildings are still uh, really just in disarray. And the sad part is, uh, you can see right here, this building actually still has the Christmas decorations just hanging from it. Uh, again, this happening on Christmas morning, so it's very sad to see this in person. Uh, you can see some of the old boards there that they've taken out of some of these buildings, but they continue the cleanup, and the restoration, you see the whole side of this building here um, where the blast was. And a lot of this area, I think down here even was in the blast radius, uh, but they've put gl glass back in a lot of the buildings and are restoring a lot of it. So good to see that Nashville is healing, uh, but still very sad to imagine and think what happened here uh, almost a year ago, because I'm filming this in October of 2021. So the city of Nashville wears a lot of hats. Not only is it the home of country music and it's the home to the nightlife and the bar scene down there and the honky tonks and of course all the music venues but it's also the state capital of tennessee which as i said happens to be my home state so i've always had uh, a fascination with nashville always loved nashville and now that i don't live in tennessee anymore i really appreciate nashville and the state of tennessee even more so we're going to check out the tennessee state capitol some of the things here surrounding the capitol building we're going to go out and check out the mall behind it and we'll ultimately end up at the tennessee state museum so let's go check some of this out so this little uh plaque here talks about the tennessee state capitol and i guess it's only fitting that the last in a day series i did was philadelphia because the tennessee state capitol was designed by william strickland he's a noted philadelphia architect who also designed the tower of independence hall we saw independence hall when we were in philadelphia go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it so uh, that's sort of uh, the Tennessee State Capitol is built sort of after Independence Hall. Now on the back side of the State Capitol, back here, looking out over the Bicentennial State Mall. And this was a uh, Opened in 1996 to celebrate the bicentennial of Tennessee becoming a state. Of course, Tennessee became a state in 1796. And then on the other end down there, uh, the building that you can see right there is the Tennessee State Museum. Here, right about the center of the Bicentennial Mall, they actually have a farmer's market. And I'm just gonna walk in here and hope that they have some water, because I'm thirsty. But uh, it looks like they have tables here. You can sit outside and eat. Uh, they have a wine tasting over here too. So nice little place to relax if you're planning to come out here on the mall and explore a little bit. So the farmer's market in there actually had a lot of different places to eat. Uh, they had a lot of local produce, folks selling things in there. So check that out. That's pretty cool. You might see something there that you might like and I want to take home or might just need a snack around here. And they did have water. They have all sorts of water. I got the biggest one I could find. So now made it to the Tennessee State Museum. Uh, this is a fairly new museum. I think it only opened in the past couple of years, which details the full history of the state of Tennessee. Also has some unique exhibits throughout the year. Uh, but it is free to go in and it is open I think seven days a week Just make sure if you're coming to check the calendar so that you know when it's open what its hours are what days all that good stuff uh, But we don't really have time to check it out today 
because we got to go back and get ready for the Country Music Hall of Fame and to see Dolly this evening. So uh, I'll meet you guys over there and catch you a little bit later this evening. But this has been Bicentennial Park in the Tennessee State Capitol. Let's look back this way. You can see the State Capitol way back up there on the hill. We came all the way from up there in the city of Nashville all the way down here to the mall. Very beautiful area. But I'll see you guys in just a bit when we go to see Dolly Parton at the Country Music Hall of Fame. In my Tennessee mountain home. And I remember this one time, Mom came out and I said, Mama, is she pretty? Mom said, oh, she ain't done the trash. <laughs> I said, that's what I'm gonna be when I grow up. <laughs> and so I think I made it. But I just hope I look like trash. I don't want to be trash. You go around on the streets saying to everybody, you know that song, Old Time Preacher Man? That's about me. That's my granddaughter, Dawn. Well, that's going to do it for our time here in Nashville. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've seen a lot of the city and we saw Dolly. So what more can you want from Nashville? Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go down below. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss any more of these in a day series. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure. Oh,